Welcome to EPG Patsala. I am Parthopotim Bora from Department of Sociology, Diburga University, Assam. The topic of this module is DP Mukherjee and Indigenous Sociology from the paper Contemporary Social Theory. So uh, this module will be basically discussing the th various theories of DP Mukherjee and the role or the, the significance of this theory in the development of indigenous sociology. So as you know, Lucknow University was one of the important centers for the sociological study in the pre-independence India. And among the main stalwarts in the Lucknow University like Radha Kamal Mukherjee, D.N. Mozumdar, D.P. Mukherjee, D.P. Mukherjee was well known for his work that had a large influence over the years. Uh, one of the important contributions of D.P. Mukherjee was his major critique of Western modernity. So, and his idea of the tradition and modernity and how there can be the contradiction between tradition and modernity were the, some of the important sociological contribution of D.P. Mukherjee. So, because of that, uh, this module will try to acquaint you with the ideas or the various contribution of the D.P. Mukherjee in the context of indigenous sociology. D.P. Mukherjee, as a person, he was a man of varied talent. So he was basically born in 1894 in West Bengal in a middle class Beng Brahmin Bengali family. Uh, because of the context of the Bengal during that time, which were, had the influence of people like Rabindranath Tagore, Bankim Sandra Satarji, Sarasandra, Sandra, etc. Uh, Mukherjee actually had a kind of influence of the academic environment that was taking place in the Bengal during that time. Uh, he went to, after studying in West Bengal, he went to Bengal at the time, he went to London for the further study. And he was in the Lucknow University and he worked for Lucknow University almost like 32 years. So the long career he was associated with Lucknow University was associated with also the production of large number of work. And these different works, uh, in fact, range in the diverse field. So the multiplicity of the work or the variety of the work was one of the important uh, like feature of the D.P. Mukherjee. The large influence that D.P. Mukherjee had in the sociology can be seen from the fact that he was basically talking how the sociology can be or the work of sociology can be done in the various area. Say for example, he even wrote, sociology has a floor and a ceiling like any other science, but its speciality consists in its floor being ground floor of all types of social disciplines and in its ceiling remaining open to the sky. It basically talking about the scope of the large amount of work that can be done in the field of sociology. Like, the, like his colleague in the Lucknow University, Mukherjee was also the supporter of the interdisciplinary approach. So interdisciplinary both in terms of theoretical as well as methodological approach. And this interdisciplinary approach made him one of the prolific writer of his time. Some of the major works that were done by the D.P. Mukherjee includes like diversities. Then he had like 10 works in Bengali and 9 works in English. So his early contribution includes basic concepts in sociology that was published in 1932, personality and the social sciences. Some of the other publications like Indian culture that was published in 1942, problems of Indian youth that was published in 1942, then Tagore, a study on Indian history, a study in method, introduction to music, views and counter, counter views. So the large number of studies that were done by D.P. Mukherjee basically point out to the fact that he was against compartmentalization of knowledge. So being a versatile scholar, he used to deal with extreme varied subjects. So that ranges from the, that of personality to that of culture, tradition and modernity, role of middle class, nature of sociology, and so on and so forth. 
So that basically shows the diverse areas that covered by D.P. Mukherjee, that basically shows that he was against the compartmentalization of the knowledge. One of the important characteristics of D.P. Mukherjee was that he was a Marxologist, not a Marxist. As he himself said, Marxism rather than a political ideology, it should be a method of analysis. So as a result, he termed him as a Marxologist, not as a Marxist. He argued that Indian society can be understood or can be studied in terms of dialectical process. And that was the dialectical process that was taking place between the tradition and modernity or the colonialism and nationalism or individualism and collectivism. He said that the dialectics was not the same as it was used by Marxists. So rather his understanding of dialectics is somewhat different from that of the Marxists. So we can say that he was basically a Marxologist. While understanding himself as Marxologist, D.P. Mukherjee talk about the limitation or the problems that are associated with the Marxist understanding of Indian society. He said that while study of the Indian society, the Marxists were trying to study each and everything in terms of class struggle or the class conflict. However, what we need to keep in mind, the class conflict in the Indian society is always overshadowed by the caste conflict. So there is a problem of studying the Indian society only in terms of class conflict when caste also play an important role. Second important limitation of the Marxist study as he mentioned that the Marxist scholar in India as D.P. Mukherjee argued were not aware of the socio-economic history of India. So he said that this is the another problem of Marxist study of Indian society. And the third important limitation as it was pointed out by D.P. Mukherjee was that the economic pressure that was understood by the Marxist scholar not always work as a kind of mechanical force, but they may change or they may act at a different way in a different point of time. But this was not properly understood by that, as argued by D.P. Mukherjee, that was not properly understood by Marxists. So this was another limitation of Marxist scholarship in India as it was pointed by D.P. Mukherjee. D.P. Mukherjee further said that Indian society is changing and even though it is changing, what is important that it is not disintegrating. So because although the society is changing but it is not disintegrating, the what is objective in this context is that it is a process of change that is taking place in the Indian society. So it is not enough for an Indian sociologist to be a sociologist without understanding how the various custom tradition are changing in our Indian society. The another important idea with reference to the D.P. Mukherjee is his understanding of personality. So Mukherjee himself was not a well wizard of the positivistic construction of personality. So it was because the achievement that was seen in case of personality is mainly oriented to the Western personality. The living condition of the masses improved due to the development of science and technology. But Mukherjee was not a kind of well wizard to the positive orientation of the personality because there is a need to have kind of proper balance between the traditional society or sociality on the one hand and that of the Western modernity on the other hand. So say for example, he talk about how we can combine both traditional as well as modern element in our personality. Despite uh, understanding and studying the tradition, he was not supporting the worship of tradition. So he said that say for example, in case of personality, we need to be have a proper balance between the ethics and morality to that of rationality and the thinking mind. So it is basically the ethics and morality need to be combined with that of rationality. And he said that this rationality or this thinking mind is basically the product of modern age, but it is not the product of traditional age per se. Uh, next to topic uh, regarding D.P. Mukherjee is the Hindu-Muslim relation. 
whether it is the synthesis or conflict. So D.P. Mukherjee basically talk about the unique kind of relation that exists between the Hindu and the Muslim. Uh, he said that in his understanding, there are many domains to understand the Hindu-Muslim relation. So one of the important domains, he basically talk about how there is a kind of partnership or there is a kind of agreement between the Muslim ruler as well as among the, uh, with the Hindu ruler during the ancient time. Uh, say for example, in the period that is a historical period between the 11th to the 17th period, 17th century AD, uh, he said that the Muslim ruler were ruling the Hindu majority. But despite the fact that uh, Muslim ruler were ruling the Hindu majority, there were not much conflict that was seen during that period. The second dimension of the alliance between Hindu and Muslim, he was basically talking in terms of economic interest. Say for example, uh, there was a time when the military, most of the military ruler or the military chiefs were Muslim. But the zamindars were mainly Hindus. And there was, although both belonged to the two religious group, they had a common interest. And third interesting fact he basically talked about is basically the how the culture of the two communities influences each other. So there was a mutual interaction of the Sufi as well as Bhakti movement. So this can influence, this influence can be seen in the area like literature, costume music, fine art, etc. So there was various domain where the interaction were taking place between the Hindus and the Muslim in India. So the cultural synthesis that was taking place in the economic or in the aesthetic interest had a uh, large influence in the Indian society as it was understood by D.P. Mukherjee. One of the important area of interest of the D.P. Mukherjee was the idea of tradition and modernity, the contradiction that exists between the tradition and modernity. So the significance of the tradition was understood by the D.P. Mukherjee because he said that Indian social reality, in fact, is rooted in the tradition. So this is one of the most important intellectual interests of D.P. Mukherjee. However, he was, while talking about the tradition, he was not in a way or he was not ready to glorify the tradition. So he said that there is a need of understanding tradition, but there should not be a kind of glorification of the tradition. So he basically wanted to see the, how the, the, the role of tradition, how the tradition changes with the advent of modernity. Mukherjee basically uh, concentrated on the specificity of the Indian tradition and how it was basically marked less by the class struggle and more by the assimilation or the cultural synthesis. So for D.P. Mukherjee, the specificity of the Indian tradition is that the Indian tradition has the more of the cultural synthesis or the cultural assimilation rather than having the, the class struggle. So that was the, one of the another specific character of the Indian tradition. So he, while understanding the Indian tradition, he divided the Indian tradition into the two, into three different categories: the primary tradition, secondary tradition, and the tertiary tradition. While studying the Indian tradition, Mukherjee talked about the three types of tradition: primary tradition, secondary tradition, and the tertiary tradition. So he said that primary tradition is the most authentic one. And he said the secondary tradition came because of the Muslim rule and while the third, third that is the tertiary tradition came because of the British rule. So tax of the sociologists then became the, the tradition in who is he or she is born. So he said that the, the main role or the main function of the sociologists is to study his or her own tradition in who is he or he or she is born. While studying the tradition or the role of tradition, he also studied the dialectics between the tradition and modernity. So he said that Indian tradition always worked as a kind of representative tradition, but there is also a synthesis with the coming of modernity. So say for example, he said that because of the coming of the various values, because of urbanization, technological change, bureaucracy, etc., there was a uh, kind of tradition 
modernity dialectics. So he, he said that although there are some changes that are taking place in our society, but D.P. Mukherjee was in fact optimistic how the Indian tradition will be successful to adjust with the various changes that are taking place in our society. So say for example, he gave the example of primitive tribe, how the primitive tribe in fact were successful enough to adjust with the various western influence. But they did not vanish or did not go away, rather they adjusted with the various western influences that were taking place in our society. So on the basis of the understanding of dialectics and modernity, we can say that it can lead to the conflict or synthesis, particularly in the aspect of those cultural value in the Indian society. The dialectics of tradition and modernity, which is leading to the conflict and synthesis, is one of the essential component for the study of Indian society. While studying the dialectics between tradition and modernity, D.P. Mukherjee gave emphasis on the work of Tagore and Gandhi. So it is interesting to note that uh, the idea of conflict between the or idea of dialectics between the tradition and modernity is not a completely new to D.P. Mukherjee. So this was basically rooted in the day of freedom struggle when the work of Rabindranath Tagore as well as Gandhi were getting importance. Say for example, while understanding the Tagore in comparison with that of Bankim Sandha Satarjee, D.P. Mukherjee argued that the Tagore's saturation with Indian tradition was deeper and hence he could more easily assimilate bigger dose of western thought. So while talking about how the Rabindranath Tagore was assimilating the western thought, he was basically arguing for his saturation of Indian tradition. So how the Rabindranath Tagore was saturated with Indian tradition, as a result, he could easily assimilate various western thought. D.P. Mukherjee also talked about the emerging intellectual and the role in their society. Say for example, while understanding the role of middle class in the colonial economy, uh, D.P. Mukherjee argued that, uh, in fact, the middle class did not play a very important role in the society. Uh, in fact, he said that middle class were a kind of gap between the, uh, they, uh, they could not break the gap with the masses. So he was basically critical of the role of the middle class because they continue, they fail to have a relation with the masses. So he said that this failure of the middle class to have a kind of integration with the masses is because of the conflict that exists between the tradition and modernity. So he said that the middle class failed to use the indigenous culture in order to um, remain contact with the masses. Radar. Their failure to use their indigenous culture or their failure to explore the significance of Indian culture or the indigenous culture make them separated or remain them separated from that of masses. So we see uh, there are many important contribution of D.P. Mukherjee that actually help us to understand the various contradictions or the various dialectics that were taking place in Indian society. But although his work was important, but there were some uh, problems that were, can be seen that can be seen in the work of D.P. Mukherjee. Say for example, over emphasis on the work of tradition in the context of modernization, he failed to see the content of this tradition. So say for example, this thing was also pointed by one other, another important Indian sociologist T.N. Modern. So it was a failure of D.P. Mukherjee uh, to understand the various content of the tradition was one of the important limitation of the work of D.P. Mukherjee. Although uh, the limitation is seen in the work of D.P. Mukherjee, but there is an important component or there is an important significant contribution of D.P. Mukherjee in the study of Indian society. Say for example, we can talk about how he used the question of history and the value 
in the context of Marxist approach. Say for example, we can talk about uh, while talking about the context of modernization in according to Mukherjee, he also includes the idea of nationalism, idea of democracy, the science and technology, and cultivation of rationality, planning and socio-economic development, etc. So he said that the modern man in Indian society, the first task is to study the social tradition. So basically, he was thus wanted to see that for a modern man in Indian society, there should be a link between the history and the sociology. So he was basically uh, against the combine, uh, against the separating of the domain of history and tradition, history and sociology. So while saying that there is a need of combining history and sociology, he was basically focusing how we need to give importance to the tradition in the study of Indian society. And while studying the society with the specificity of tradition, he was basically pointing out the important argument regarding the nature of sociology itself. So while he said that the study of society should be rooted in the tradition, it was basically the idea of indigenous sociology that emanates from his work. So say for example, uh, when he said we need not forget about the tradition or we need not forget about the history. It is basically his emphasis on the indigenous sociology. So say for example, uh, again he talk about how the changes that in the Indian society is changing. So when he said that changing is more real than the change per se, he was also talking about the continuous process of change. But in the same manner, he was also uh, pointing out how the changes also help in the continuation of tradition, but that may be in a defined manner. So it is for the role of the sociologists to see the changes that are taking place in the tradition. Uh, he said, say for example, when he was against the Western personality, he was basically against the Eurocentric understanding of society. So for him, the Eurocentric understanding of society is problematic because uh, it failed to give proper emphasis on the role of tradition. So he said for D.P. Mukherjee, there is a need to see the continuity and the discontinuity that exists in the Indian history. So while putting emphasis on the continuity and discontinuity that exists in the Indian history, we can see his emphasis that we are looking again and again, his emphasis on the Indian tradition. So this was a unique contribution of the D.P. Mukherjee in terms of how he tried to give more emphasis on the study of tradition and this study of tradition on the other hand how the tradition adjusted with the coming of the forces of modernity how the dialectics occur and how the dialectics of tradition and modernity in fact helped in the uh, formation or, or in the adjustment of the tradition so this emphasis in fact was an the was helping in the development of indigenous sociology. So if we see the indigenous sociology as a kind of development that talk about the specificity or the uniqueness of the particular society, how sociology uh, is rooted in the indigenous theory or indigenous idea, we can see how the D.P. Mukherjee's idea can be an important way to understand whole discourse of indigenous sociology. So indigenous sociology, of course, as a field, basically talk about how the how we can use the indigenous method. Say, for example, uh, there are the particular domain of indigenous sociology developed from the, in the Japan. But the idea of indigenous sociology that can be emanated or that started from the D.P. Mukherjee work uh, help us to see the indigeneity or the question of indigenous sociology with special emphasis on the tradition. So uh, this understanding will help you to know the nature of Indian sociology, how uh, it is emerging or how it is continuing over the years. Thank you.